Fragile, must be Italian. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the Speedy's Garage YouTube channel. Today we're actually not working on our Challenger Hellcat Go Man Go. Winter rolls around, I always get a little bit stir crazy, especially after the holidays. Go Man Go is pretty well sorted out. We're probably gonna do a little upgrade on the fuel system before uh, racing season starts again, but we'll get to that later. I really would, had been looking for something kind of simple and might be relaxing and fun to do. And I'm gonna go to another project here just for a little bit. It might lead to a few other things depending on how it goes. I've got one of those personalities where I've always gotta have, my gears are always turned. I've always gotta have something to work on and something to kind of focus on to keep, kind of keep me happy really, I guess is the best way to put it. I don't like painting, I don't like building decks or working on houses and doing things like that, but you put a wrench or a screwdriver in my hand on a project, and I am zen, that is my zen right there. I really, really like working on stuff, especially if I can start to fabricate some little things and maybe work on some electronics. So we'll get to some of that, maybe a hint for you there. So stay tuned, let's get to it. Got my lucky hat on, so let's open up our boxes, see what we got. Let's see, well, got a box inside a box. Here's what we're going to be working on today. There's some updated LED tail lights. We've got them from Burtman Industries. You can get these. I did some searching around, and this, this isn't a new modification. This has been around for a while. I'll show you the vehicle. We're going to do it on here in a second. This modification has been around a while. I keep a list of projects that I'd like to do at some point. I've had this on the list for, the, for a while. And you can get these at several places, and the prices range by quite a bit, to be honest, probably between $100 and $150. You want to be careful with the ones you get. These are an LED panel in the, in the bottom section here. <clears throat> and it kind of updates the vehicle. These lamps, this is your turn signal, and this is your backup light. These are still just regular roll incandescent bulbs. So keep that in mind. The only thing that's updating is down here, this LED piece. It is a nice unit. These are Depot or Depot, D-E-P-O brand. And if you remember when we did the front end of the Forerunner and we did the HID conversion, it was the same brand of light. And I've had really good luck with those, so I'm glad to see that's the brand. And then it also has a feature where there's a little side light here that kind of lights up as a little running light, which is kind of nice. Um, I got these from Bourbon Industries because he was the only place I found that would actually warranty these things. And I was gonna say, you wanna be careful with the ones you get, because I have read reports of reviews of these LED strips burning out. So keep that in mind if you're gonna get you some of these. So we're gonna be putting those tail lights on our 2002 third gen 4Runner that I have nicknamed Project Sport Runner. It's got a bunch of updates to it and upgrades. And I tried to do things that I thought Toyota might have done had they actually built the truck this way. It's got a, most of the upgrades actually have Toyota parts. But one thing I did do a couple of years ago is I updated the headlights to HIDs. I was getting where I couldn't really see that well at night with what was in here. HIDs were a huge upgrade and probably one of my favorite things about the truck. And it was actually a pretty fun project. I'll link to the top of playlist about this vehicle if you wanna go back and check out any of the other modifications that we've made. But what that did is that updated the front end of the vehicle quite a bit and I did, um, halos around the shrouds for the HIDs. And I did some strip lighting and I'll kind of show you guys what that looks like. So there are the LEDs and they look really cool. I ride around with those on sometimes, especially if it's cloudy or rainy weather. And then there's the HIDs and there, man, you talk about an upgrade. I can see really, really well at night with those things on. So very, very happy with that upgrade. The challenge is we did all of that. The, the marker lights or the parking lights on the side we updated with LED it kind of made the back of the truck and other areas of the truck look a bit dated. So we're gonna do those LED tail lights to start updating the rear of the truck. And these are pretty high quality lights, like I mentioned. You can tell when you look at things like the connector. It's nice and flexible, feels like it's good plastic. The wiring doesn't feel like it's brittle and cheap. It's got a nice soft rubber uh, plug or grommet to seal everything. And it just has a nice quality heavy feel to it. 
You might be worried about hyperflash, which is where you see some people swap out LEDs and you see that real flash or fast flashing blinker. Remember, these are still incandescent. So if you just install these as is, you won't have that issue. And there's what it looks like next to the factory tail light. You can see it's just a, a, just a subtle, which is what I like. I like subtle changes, but just a little bit more modern. Okay, to get this done, I'm gonna use my battery powered uh, socket wrench, an extension, 10 millimeter socket, cordless drill driver, Phillips head screwdriver, and I'm probably gonna need a couple of pry tools. If I need extra things, I'll be sure to mention them as we go, but this is what I know I'm gonna need to get started. All right, access the tail light bolts by opening the hatch. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the cargo light so we don't run the battery down while we're working. And now we're just gonna start taking the tail light out. I'm gonna start with removing this little piece of trim along the bottom of the cargo area. And it's just some Phillips head screws. And remember this is, if you're working on one of these, it is 20 year old plastic. So you wanna be careful, but it might take just a little bit of persuasion because it has been here a while. Mine was in there pretty tight, and all it is is a little kind of a tab on the back side. And I found it best to come in with a dash pry tool, come under the back end from the inside, and just pop these loose. And that way you didn't put any stress on our trim panel. Now we can just move that out of the way. And I always like to take a look at these just to make sure none of them are bent out. So when I reinstall it, I'm not going to hang up on anything. And that all looks good. So. Step one is done. Next, we're gonna take out the Phillips head screws on the side here, since I've got the drill driver ready. One. I'm just leaving the screws in the cargo area close to where they go. And with those side screws out, you can remove this little piece of trim on each side. That'll kind of give us some access. And there's some clips in here. Again, we're gonna be very careful. 20 year old plastic, remember. Use our, uh, might have to use dash pry tool, but we'll see. We don't take this out very far, just far enough to get access to the wiring. That's probably enough, won't take much. As you can see, we're able to get to the wiring and the little bolt that's the probably the ground the ground lug if i had to guess and this is what we're after and the pins that we pop loose there's one at the top right underneath the little bracket one kind of in the middle and then one kind of down there in the corner and once those three pop we got plenty of room we can get in there now all right it's gonna be a little bit tricky to hold the camera and do this but i'm gonna try so on the plug that goes with the tail light it's just a little switch you flip up and you unplug it's taped to this bracket right here we'll just slip that tape and then this is just a 10 millimeter ground lug i'm going to put a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench on that let's see if you want to be super careful disconnect your battery i didn't because i don't think it's getting any power right now anyway we got the ground lug, the plug undone, and we did clip that tape on the bracket. Now there's two 12 millimeter bolts holding the tail light in. I'm use my ratchet for those. And with those out of the way, I think we can just pop the tail light out. And I'm pushing out away from the cargo area. There's little pins that snap in. There we go. So there's one pin. There's the other one. Looks like the, looks like the bracket came with the pin in this case. So I'll have to pop that off and then it'll pop back into this little square down here. And here's the grommet. I pop a little plastic retainer off using a pry tool. Just went behind it and boop, pop that right off. Now I'm going to work on this grommet. If it gives me too much trouble, I'll spray a little WD-40 on it. But I think we can just fish it out just like that. Don't drop the tail light. So there we go, one tail light assembly removed. And putting them side by side, I'm actually even more impressed now with this aftermarket LED tail light. They even used the same wire colors. I mean, that's a, 
a detail I honestly wasn't expecting, but they use the exact same wire colors on everything, so it lines up just like factory. Goes right, right along with my theme. I always like to do things just like the factory would do it. They even match the wire colors, so good to go. You remember I told you I had another box of parts? So to finish the look while we've got the tail lights out, I've got some more LEDs, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and replace the incandescent bulb for the turn signal, as well as the backup light with LEDs. So we're gonna do that now while the tail lights are out. I'm gonna start with the backup light. It's just a counterclockwise twist. There's the incandescent bulb. There's our LED bulb, and I'm hoping that these will be brighter so when you're backing up at night, we'll get some more light. Just put that back in, and then it's a clockwise quarter turn. Here's our turn signal, same deal. Pull out the incandescent bulb. I'm gonna pop in our LED. Some LEDs are polarity specific. I don't know if these are or not, but we're gonna find out. If you don't have one of these in your toolbox and you work on electronics or vehicle electronics very often, you definitely need one. It's a power probe. It'll do all kinds of stuff, but in this case, we're gonna use it to supply voltage to the tail light housing. And not only make sure everything's working, but make sure we have the bulbs installed correctly before we get it on the truck. Now, obviously, if you don't have one of these, you can just go over to the truck and plug it in, hop in and turn everything on and run back and forth to the front of the back of the truck to check it. But since we have one of these, we're gonna do it with this. We know the ring terminal is ground, so we've connected up the power probe ground to the ring, and it's the white with black stripe wire. You'll notice that, that white with black stripe wire goes to each bulb, or each bulb connector, bulb socket. That's because that's the ground for that bulb. And then we can look and say, okay, the backup light is gonna be red with a blue stripe, and the turn signal light is going to be green with, I believe that's a yellow stripe. So we're gonna check those, and then the stop light and, and uh, parking light are going to be either, what is that, green or blue? blue with a white stripe or solid blue. So we're gonna check these, make sure everything works correctly. And what we do is we come to the plug and we find the positive side, remember, black with white stripe is ground, and we're gonna to touch the power probe to the pins that correspond to the wire color we're interested in. And we should see light on the other side when we give it 12 volts. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around so you guys can see it. I'm gonna start with the backup light, which is red with blue stripe like we mentioned. I'm gonna turn the beep off so it doesn't annoy me. And then all I'm gonna do is touch the probe to that pin, and I'm gonna supply 12 volts. There we go, ooh, that's nice and bright. Now we're gonna check the turn signal. That was green with yellow stripe. So all we're gonna do again is just touch the probe, flip the switch for 12 volts. See, I like how nice and clean that LED is. It doesn't fade in and fade off like an incandescent bulb. All right, now, Let's check our LED panel. Make sure we got all the LEDs working there. I'm not sure which one of these wires is gonna be parking light versus brake light, but let's see. This is the solid, I'm gonna call it blue, solid blue wire. Again, we're gonna give it 12 volts. Oh, that's a little side light, see that? So that must be parking light, and now the last one is blue with white stripe. I'm guessing this is gonna be the brake light. This should be pretty bright. Yeah. That all works, and we know it works. Now we're ready to put it in the car. And for grins, I did flip the LED bulbs around to see if they were polarity specific. Specific, it's hard to say. And they are not. The ones that I bought work either way. I'll leave a link in the description down below of the lights, the LED bulbs I actually purchased if you wanna get the exact same ones so that you know what you're getting. And now I'm gonna take a look at this grommet because where it is in relation to the plug is probably important to make sure it reaches everything it needs to reach inside the vehicle. So I'm gonna compare it to the factory plug. And you notice they actually taped it up really, really tight. And that's probably something I need to do too so that if I'm ever removing this in the future, I don't fight with this grommet. So I'm gonna make sure I've got them about the same depth on the wiring. And I'm gonna tape this one up. So there it is taped up. I did put a little zip tie on this wiring because I'm a bit OCD about this kind of thing. Now we can put it on the truck. I'm gonna start by feeding the wires in. I'm gonna plug in the grommet and if it gives me any trouble, I'll put some WD-40 on there, but might be able to get it without that. Now we're just gonna put it back into the retainers. 
make sure the wire is connected to the clip at the bottom. It'll kind of want to pop out of the link. I'm going to lock it in place. Make sure it lines up with the body panel like it's supposed to. And connect up the wiring. Just the plug and the ground ring. So there's everything hooked back up. Be careful with your ground wire. When you tighten the, the bolt, it'll want to turn the eye of your um, eye bolt. So I have to help, I held it in place like this so that it would stay down and it would kind of follow the routing of the wire. Anytime you have a short, 90% of the time it's a ground problem. So you're going to be careful with that wire. And also don't forget to tape it back to the little standoff that's in the fender here. It keeps the wire harness off of that sharp edge. Okay, before we button everything up, we're going to do a test. There's the parking lights. And this also gives you an opportunity to see the difference between the LED bulbs and the incandescent. So LEDs on the driver's side, incandescents on the passenger. So there's the parking lights. Brake lights, turn signal. Oh, we got a hyper flash. We got a hyper flash. We need to fix that. Those are the hazards. And now in reverse. Looks like everything's working. Okay, we are ready to button it back up. We'll line up our pins. Lock those back into place. Put these 12 millimeter bolts back in. Always start them by hand. Actually, they're 10 millimeter bolts. I said 12. Don't drop it. And I'm going to finish tightening them by hand until they're just snug because you're dealing with plastic. You don't want to break anything. All right, that one's done. Now we just gotta do the other side. All right, we got both tail lights in. We got the interior panels buttoned up. Now we just gotta put our trim pieces back on with these Phillips head screws. And I am gonna start it by hand before putting the impact driver on it. Finally, just this trim panel, and remember the uh, screw holes are closer to the cargo area. And be careful when you're putting these back in. Like I said, these can have a tendency to, to catch on the body, and it'll bend that tab back. So make sure when you put them in, it snaps in. Make sure your gasket is over the trim. Use one of my body tools or uh, trim panel tools to help it down here. There we go. Finally just put the screws back in. Don't over tighten them, I'm just running them down snug. You guys didn't think I would update the back turn signal lights with LEDs and not do the front, did you? So now, I'm gonna swap out these incandescent bulbs for the same turn signal bulb we used in the back. So I was a little worried that it might not fit because of the length, but it did. So now I got the front upgraded too. Now we gotta do something about that. It's always something. And the way we fix that is with one of these. It's a specific relay or flasher relay for LED turn signals. The relay that's in the truck, it's looking for a load across those bulbs and an incandescent bulb has quite a bit of load and it, it, the relay knows how much load is going across there and it flashes at a specific pace. When it doesn't sense that load, it thinks one of the turn signals is burned out. So it's actually flashing fast as a warning indicator letting you know you need to check your bulbs. LED bulbs don't have any load, or almost none, so you have to get an LED turn signal relay to go with them. This one's even adjustable on the top, so we can actually turn this little screw and adjust how fast the flashers actually, or the turn signals actually flash. 
I'm kind of confused by this though. It says lamp LED is general, okay? About dodges three times. Obviously a mistranslation, but something kind of funny on this relay. <laughs> now the downside is the factory flasher relay is behind this panel. It's actually on the back side of that fuse block. We're gonna have to remove this part of the dash to get to it. And I get rid of these four 10 millimeter bolts. I've had this dash off so many times, I could do it with my eyes closed. And then it should just pop off. There we go. Had some switches I forgot about. I'll unplug those. Let's let that hang down. Okay. All right, looking this over, I think the easiest way is just to take this duct out of the way. It looks like it's just a single Phillips head. I want to be careful not to hit any wiring or anything, but it's gotta come out. Oh, look at that. Yes, it did. Alright, this is the top of that fuse block panel. And I've looked around and I only see one relay that I think can be it. I think it's this one. So I'm just gonna unplug it. And now we're comparing it to the new relay. And I'll make sure everything lines up. So the L's line up, the three pins line up. This one's got a negative here. This says E for earth. This one says positive here. This says B, which I assume is for battery. So I think we're good to go. All right, we'll give a little test. Still flashing fast. So all I'm gonna do is reach back here and turn the little screw. Oh yeah, it was all the way turned off. I'm just gonna turn it till we get the right speed. I wonder if you can do it while it's running. We'll try that. That still seems like it's a little bit fast. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Alright, I think I got it. I adjusted it just a tick more. That feels normal. Let's check the hazard lights. Good to go. Whoa, that was easy. Now we just gotta put it all back together. Might as well finish the package and do the third brake light as well. That way all the exterior lights will be LED. I'm going to have to take off the uh, rear little spoiler, whatever you want to call it, and it uses torque screws. So get that off next. What do y'all think? T T25? It's almost guess. T25. Bingo. And if you go this far, pay attention to those little spoiler screws. They've got like a plastic little grommet on them. You don't want to lose that. All right, we got the little LED bulb plugged in. It looks white. I want to make sure it lights up red. Give it a quick test. Bingo. And before I put that spoiler back on, I'm going to clean up this brake light a little bit. Probably never going to get a sponge to it. I'm going to be real careful putting these back on. I never find this little grommet again. Now I'm going to finish tightening them by hand. Yep, I'm going to do the license plate lights too. A couple of Phillips head screws, and hopefully we don't have any trouble. With just a little finagling, I was able to get the housings out, and on these, they don't unplug from the back. The actual plastic housing actually pops off, but these have been on here a long time. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna be super careful, hopefully not hurt anything. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna clean those up. There's a little bulb. Oh, that one's burned out. Wonder how long that's been out. So yeah, good time to swap them out for LED. Okay, I'll pop a little LEDs in. Pay attention when you put your lens back on, there's a little tab, presumably, to help you get it off if it's stuck. You can push on that. Put that back on there. 
And then we're just going to slide them back into place and put the screws back in. And I always keep my stock parts. You never know, right? So I put the stock tail lights back in the box. The updated ones came in, and we'll just store that in the attic of the shop in case we ever need them. Well, everything was going so smooth and easy, I decided I would go ahead and also update the fog lights to LEDs as well. And this Forerunner did not come with fog lights from the factory. It had those little plastic plugs here, but it had the spot for them. And when I started looking around on the truck, this is probably 15 years ago, I realized that it actually has the wiring. There was a little connector in the back for them. So I looked up where I could pick them up from. And you guys remember that place? I think it was called Performance Products or Performance something. And they kind of specialized in Toyota aftermarket parts and sometimes even the um, accessories that you could get dealer installed um, when you bought your Toyota. Well, I bought them from there and I don't remember how much they were. I've had them, like I said, 15 or 16 years. And when I took the little rubber caps off the back, I was horrified to find there had been a ton of galvanic corrosion. I think that's how you say it, galvanic corrosion. It's where you have two dissimilar metals. So the housing of the um, fog light is steel and it's powder coated, very tough, very durable. The lenses were good, but there's this little aluminum plate that goes in the back and it's held by three screws and it's what the light bulb actually seats against and then the ground uh, connector actually grounds to. Well, you get some water in there, turn on your fog lights, and what you end up with is that aluminum gets consumed and it starts to deteriorate because electricity starts to flow through it. It's kind of a chemical thing. I won't go into all the details on it, but it ended up rotting off the little clip that holds the spring. I'm gonna show you what I found. Well, here's the little aluminum backing plate I was telling you about. And I've got them soaking in some of that calcium lime remover, lime away, lime and rust remover, whatever you want to call that stuff. And it ate away, it looked like it was just coated with look like, like baking soda or baking powder or something. So it's eaten most of that off. But one of them, you can see the little clip right here that would hold this spring. This is what would hold the bulb in place. It rotted away. So I can, I'm gonna try to repair this. I don't know if I'll be able to or not. And I did the same thing with the actual housings. I put some of that calcium remover in there and you can still kind of see some of it down in there where it was uh, looking like baking soda. And then I scrubbed it with a Scotch-Brite. So these are okay. There's nothing wrong with the housings. It's just, you don't, you've got to have this part right here. And I don't even know, I'm going to call their Hella, H-E-L-L-A lamps. That's exactly what Toyota used. And it's a German company. I'm going to call Hella and see if they will give me some of these or if they even make these anymore. If they do, I'm going to see if I can get some. The good news is you can get this actual fog light assembly. What you can't get is this bracket specific to the Forerunner. You could probably make some up. They don't look that complex. But what's unique about them is they have this little adjustment screw so you can aim them on the side there. That was something that was kind of unique. I did find these lights. They're about 50 bucks a piece. I'm probably going to go ahead and pick up a pair of these just so that I have them on the shelf. Even if I can repair them or repair this little piece, I'm still gonna pick up another set. You start talking about a 20 year old vehicle and parts get hard to find, and it's worth it for me to spend 50 bucks to have some spares. So I'm gonna get some of those on order and get them headed this way. But that's a project for another day. So be sure to tune back in. I will be getting those fog lights fixed and they will be LED. I'm just not exactly sure how I'm gonna do it, but it will happen. Project Sport Runner, we got him updated. Looks good with the LED tail lights and turn signals and brake lights. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. We got the flasher relay put in, so it slowed the turn signals back down like their factory. Didn't have any weirdness, no extra clicks or anything like that. I had read somewhere that those relays can click an extra time after you turn them off. Mine hasn't been doing that, so really happy with that. And this truck is actually one of the more popular vehicles on the channel. I don't know if it's because they have such a, a strong following or their legendary reliability or what it is, but it's been a pretty popular vehicle on the channel. I love it and I have no intentions of getting rid of it. I realize I'm a little bit behind the times. These people have been doing these LED swap overs and these tail lights for a long, long time and I'm just now getting caught up to be quite honest, but hopefully someone will come across this video and it might help them out. It was the exact kind of project I was looking for on a rainy Saturday in the winter time. I was getting kind of stir crazy. I wanted something easy that wasn't frustrating that I could just spend an afternoon in the shop goofing around. That's exactly what I did. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. It's at speedies underscore garage as well as our website, www.speedies.com. Speedy's Garage.net, and hopefully, I will see you out there.